This is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. I, I'm going to try to do a video on this uh, grandfather clock uh, restoration. More so on the dial, really, because I think you've seen quite a few uh, videos about, uh, in reference to the, the clock movements. And, uh, you know, obviously I don't want to keep going over the same thing all the time. When I do the other videos, it's going to be set up a bit better so that you can actually see me working on the stuff. Uh, anyway, this is a, a grandfather clock movement, obviously, dial, brass dialed, and it probably, to me, dates from round about 1730. It was made by a guy called, as you can see on there, Thomas Kefford of Royton. Now, I've done a little bit of research on, have you look down there? Okay, I've done a bit of research on the gentleman and he was born in 1686 and he died in 1750. Now, obviously, I would say 1740s on this clock. Now, it's obviously it's a brass dial clock and it's got a moon roller at the, t you know, at the top, obviously a date aperture. Yeah, and it's got its seconds. It's an eight day time piece, an eight day clock. Um, it's quite, it's got quite a nice, nice, nicely engraved all the way around. I mean, you know, there's some time being spent on this clock. And by all accounts from what I've seen, he was a great clockmaker. Now, as you can see, it's in a pretty sorry state, really. Um, the chapter ring is going to need, obviously, resilvering. The minute ring is going to need resilvering the um moon roller is going to need some resilvering although we're going to have to be quite careful there uh, because obviously the paint but all in all it's not it's not bad it's been it's been cleaned obviously over the years with brasso uh because there's a there's a lot of residue of that i mean what we're going to do is we're probably going to take as as you can probably as you probably know uh on grandfather clock dials of this type i mean everything is, is sort of removable quite easily it's all sort of put in i'll just try and turn it round and show you um as you can see if you look there there's obviously sort of handmade screws which will uh, keep out they're, they're actually for the spandrels in each corner there and the and the actual chapter ring is held on with with pins so that'll come off and then obviously the moon roller if we just remove this bell the moon roller is obviously just put on with a pin and then obviously it operates by obviously there'll be there'll be a pin on the on the on the, uh, the the snail that will actually move it round when it gets to a certain point in time, um, and just like the date aperture, you can just see. Obviously, in the other videos, we we'll, we'll see this a lot better. Um, again, there'll be a pin coming out probably near near the the the, the centre of the, the cannon. Basically, that'll come out and that'll move that date date ring round depending on what position it's in. The clock has has been worked on in the past, and it, they've put this nylon type fishing. I call it type fishing line type stuff. I mean, I used to do a lot of sea fishing many years ago, and it's 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 that type of stuff. And what I remember about it, it had what we called memory. So, say for instance, you cast out quite quite a distance, and as you were pulling, you would have to reel in quite a bit to actually make connection with the weight on the end to pull it. Now. I don't particularly like this stuff. Uh, I always change it to to a uh, gut line. Uh, I've got, you know, a lot of people use it, and a lot of really decent clock restorers I know use it. So I don't really want to get into an argument over why it is. It's it's a personal preference. I particularly believe, uh, you know, you're better with the gut line. That's my opinion. It's more expensive. Uh, so I think usually when things are a bit more expensive, th there's a reason for it because it's actually better. That's my opinion. Um, 
So, yeah, that's pretty much the movement. The, the, the fault originally, obviously, it needs a really good service. But the fault that we can actually see now is, obviously, the, the foot is miss, missing off the uh, crutch wire. So, obviously, it's not going to work. And looking at this being, if we look close to the movement there, we can see, obviously, there's a lot of old oil and that, that's become hard. Someone at some point has punched uh the the bush round it round the center pinion uh the center wheel obviously we're going to cut all that out and we're, well, we're going to cut all that and we're going to rebush everything we'll make the bushes and we'll do that obviously someone's bushed it there in actual fact it's to me it looks a bit rough i'm going to actually pull that out and we're going to do that and then have a look here to me there'll be a bit of movement there i mean pretty much you're probably you're probably going to find there's going to be quite quite a bit of bush and work to do um yet even if we look at if we look at the the back cock there you can actually see the pinion moving about quite a bit that'll need bushing um things that'll happen there with that if if you don't bush that and it moves about a little bit okay as 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 it goes round your um your pallet will get caught on the top of some of the escape teeth, you know, as it good probabilities are, you know, it'll get caught because it's moving up and down, and it as it goes around, it'll get caught and jam on top and and stuff like that. That's what we found. So yeah, that'll we always really really check that stuff out. We actually look at that stuff underneath at our microscope just just to make sure. Uh, obviously, other ways you can do it, you can raise and you can raise and adjust the back cock, but this has got no. Uh, it's got no pins or grooves it, it, or the, the holes haven't been elongated to do that so we're going to leave it like that we're not going to start doing anything like that and we're just going to rebush that but our main my main video is going to be more so on the dial um because as we can see it's in pretty rough shape and all the white residue you see is obviously down to uh the brasso situation it's always a bit of a, a problem when someone's been i mean it looks like it's been wiped over with something someone's tried to clean it with something uh you know it's always a bit of a worry really when people do this about when people clean stuff and you know because i mean you've, you've got to really get all that off i mean you've, you've got to make sure there's nothing there because you want the silvering to look uh decent uh the, the other thing is as well if you I mean, we, we, we silver dials and, and if there's any, any residue or anything on the dial and we haven't got it off, I mean, we haven't managed to get it off. I mean, you know, you get up, you come in the workshop the next day and the dial looks terrible again. So you've got to redo it and redo it and redo it. I mean, it's not unusual uh, where we've had to do a dial a few times before it's actually been right. Now, obviously, all the brass work will be uh, cleaned. I mean, the, the, the one thing we may do is we may throw the spandrels in a ultrasonic cleaner to get a head start on them, providing they haven't been um, gilded or anything like that. But you know, if we'll we'll put them in, but everything else will be obviously done by hand. Um, if you look down at the date aperture as well, I mean that needs resilvering. Um, the the elephant wax, the black looks okay. There doesn't seem to be any any real problem there. Uh, that looks pretty okay. It looks okay on the. Uh, minute ring as well uh, there, there's obviously on the center brass there's it's absolutely it's it's covered in brass so it, it's really i mean you know people don't simply know i think what it is sometimes with people they actually believe that the silver and is like a spray paint or something so they think that they can clean it or i mean we've seen them where people have tried to spray them and you know, and they actually they don't realise that it's actually a chemical reaction in effect with the uh, you know the 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 silver and powder, because um, it's 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 you know it's actually got silver in it, hasn't it? So it actually gives you that effect. What we will do then is obviously when it's all done and we've got it to the to the level we are, we will then give it a, you know a thin coat of lacquer um, on it. You can actually get the horror that the. the, the the, the stuff off off cousins and and stuff like that but we i'll just i'll just get it i'll just move over here that we, we've actually had success with and this i'm not I'm, I'm you know i don't advertise for anybody this is all just stuff we we use 
we've had we've had success with that. Although it is a bit thicker, it is a bit thicker than the than the horror lean stuff. So you know, it, it's something you don't want to go mad with. I mean, being honest with you, with the um, horror tech rather, I'd probably use we're going to use the horror tech on the actual um, chapter ring. Um, that's what we're going to use and on it because we want it to be a thin coat. But you know, it's something that really you should do. Uh, you know, it, it keeps it looking nice and it does it does make a difference. Um, but yeah, that's going to be that dial. So my next video, uh, I'm going to try and keep the videos in sort of short, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, you know, and, and sort of try to concentrate, as I say, sometimes it's very difficult for me because, you know, me, you can imagine we're so busy all the time. I mean, we've got that many jobs on all the time. I mean, and, and mainly now we're moved, we've moved right over to restoration, really. We're not doing uh, much in the way of, you know, the, the the sort of 1950s type service and stuff. We're, we're now more heavily invested in doing full restoration stuff. I mean, if you scan around our workshop, we've actually got a grandfather clock there. It's getting work done on it at the moment. Um, that one's a probably about 1820s. It's actually a, a sort of rock and ship type clock. Um, it's working working quite well. It's had some clean and work done on it. Um, actually, what I was saying to you before about, as you can see, the back cock's been, Steve's been actually working on that. Um, the, the the back cock, it needs rebushing. It's actually resting. It, it's sometimes intermittently, you know, the, um, the pallet will sort of rest on top of one of the teeth. And uh, you know, jam up basically stop the clock. But apart from that, it's it, it's not really bad. Obviously, it needs a little bit more work done on it. But you know, we're just we're just going through it at the minute. And as you can see on that one, it's got a false plate. So obviously, it's you know, it's of the the sort of eighteen. You know, you know. I think they sort of go from about seventeen nineties to about eighteen twenties. I mean, people have said to me that grandfather clocks they stopped making them in eighteen sixty. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, but usually what we can do is we can look at the dial place and it's got a name Owen on it and we'll, you know, go from that. Uh, you know, it'll give us a good idea of round about the time. But I'm sort of thinking about 1820s on that. And this is going by some information I've had off the customer. A lot of the customers we're dealing with now, they've had these clocks in their family for a long time. Obviously not, you know, to the length of time, some of the, the age of some of these clocks. I mean, they've probably been in someone else's family before that. So, you know, that that's the way that is. Um, over here, we've got a cheap American style movement. I would think that's probably about 1900. Um, that came, and I thought it was quite modern when we actually come into us. It's not it's not a repair. We we bought some surplus stuff a clockmaker had passed on, and we, we got offered some of the, the, the stuff in his workshop. A lot of his stuff, is, a lot of the stuff he had is, is very, very high quality. I mean, this is something I don't even know why he had it. I mean, compared to some of the stuff he's he's got, um, is my, is Westminster chime just going off there in the background. Um, I'll just let that finish. Yeah, okay. Um, a lot of the stuff he had, it's actually going to go to Bonhams. There's going to be a sale in Bonhams, um, probably, and I, I don't know when it will be. It's when they decide, but it, it, it's a it's a really really nice collection. Uh, you know a lot of bracket clocks. I think there's a few grandfather clocks. There's a there's a there's a lovely regulator which I, I, I've I've showed interest myself in the regulator. But you know whether I'll get that I don't know. I mean I think it's going to be part of a, it's it's going to be at bottoms of luck and the it's going to be part of that collection part of that collection going through. I mean he's pretty much already uh, done the deal with the people. So I'm. Uh, I'm just stepping out of that for now and, and, and let it let sort of time go on and, and then maybe see what happens. Uh but yeah. So that that's that's where we are, as I say, I haven't been on for a while. We're, we've got the usual stuff going on in the workshop. The workshop's a bit upside down at the moment because we're doing quite a bit. Uh on my bench I'm working on a um uh, a three-train bracket clock, 
probably about 1900s quartz movement there you know. we don't really often deal with them but you know we have a guy called simon who he, he does quartz movement stuff um oldish guy he doesn't like doing mechanical clocks and so we made a thing with him we, we will do all the mechanical clocks and he just does the the quartz clocks which works very well for us but yeah that's been cleaned and it's it's going together as you can see we've got quite a a way to go quite a way to go but yeah we scan around the workshop now a nice french clock there the movement is on a a bracket on the wall there and we've got a couple of carriage clocks quite early carriage clocks the, the the nice bright one is probably about 1900 a bit nearer for you nice bright one is about 1900 this one's probably about a 1950s spring driven platform escapement i think it'll be a smith's astral type clock that one there's about 1930s and I think that one there will be about 1930s. Now Tempest Fuge is on it. Time flies is what that means. Um, in Latin. But yeah, bit of a mixed bag. As I say, I think probably from next year, we'll be probably getting away from this type of stuff. And we'll be sort of having a cut off date of probably around about 1920s. Because some of the very, the mass produced uh mantle clocks triple you know the, the triple chime stuff westminster chime stuff i mean you know it's 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 pretty you know it's got sentimental value to people really and i think that's about all it's got going for it in my opinion i mean so sometimes it's so worn and you know we're getting the same money for working on a on a grandfather clock which we absolutely love and if i'm really honest with you much much easier to do the work on i mean you know your success rate is is excellent i mean you know but probably 99 percent strike rate on it you know we it goes out and and everyone's happy uh where we the other stuff is just it's just you seem to be going back over stuff all the time trying to trying to sort things out you know you replace the three springs and you clean it and you got got and you know things start going wrong it, you know uh, it, it's just uh, it, it's a bit you know, no matter how good you, you want to be with it i mean i think you you put a part in a new part and it weakens or you make a part for it and it weakens other parts because it's stronger and it carries on like that uh so that's where we're at with that but as i say i really enjoy this type of work and uh, i am uh, gonna be trying to film a lot of it a lot of it and, and do a lot of you know more youtube stuff because I'm, I'm trying to move further and further away from um you know the the the, the 1950s stuff i'm afraid i'm gonna have to just be say to people i'm sorry we you know it's not for us we need you know we, we don't repair that type of stuff although i keep getting me as much as i try to get out of it sometimes i keep getting me heartstrings pulled and people say well it was my granddad's or this and i i, I find i always end up falling back into it uh so but i i am gonna have to make a decision soon because we just simply haven't got the space anymore and the back room what i've got in my house here which is where we lead on to our workshops that's going to be getting turned into a showroom so you know we're going to sell a few clocks i had a few clocks which i put on youtube and uh, a guy rang me up and 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 wanted the clock he seen and on the when i done a youtube video so he actually come to see me and he brought a couple of clocks to be repaired and he and he, he just literally that's the one i want and so we've done a service on it he'd done the casework himself we were going to do some casework but he'd done the casework himself and uh, he, was, he was absolutely we delivered it and he was absolutely delighted with it um nice clock a nice welsh round dial clock menzies of i think it might have been wales i think it was it was a tall it wasn't a scottish grandfather clock i don't think um, but that was a really nice clock, but he, but he enjoyed that. He liked that. And I've been to his house and we put fitted the movements. He took the case. He'd done the case work and we fitted the movements. And I've got to be honest with you, he's done an absolutely beautiful job of it. It looks, it looks really well in his hallway, really well. So that's, that's me. 
up to date, caught up with people on YouTube. And as I say, look out for me other videos, but this is video number one. Um, just the introduction. And uh, there you go. So hopefully the next time, the next video will be me. The dial will be off the movement. Uh, and I think I'll get Steve to work on the movement and I'll work on the dial. Um, and so I'll go through the dial and I'll uh, go through silver in the dial and, you know, and everything else. I'll probably skip a few stages such as, you know, rubbing it down and things like that because the videos would be too long. So, you know, but, but obviously explain as much as I can all the way through. And as I say, I'm always happy to, uh, you know, answer as many questions as I can. Uh, you know, keep. I'd like to, like you to keep the comments very friendly. If you know, if if you don't mind, I mean, I, I won't respond to any, you know, nasty criticism in any way. I'm not saying my way is the only way. I'm just saying this is the way I do it. This is what we've been successful at. We are very successful. So. And this is the way I've been taught uh, by, you know, people, my uncle, for instance, 93 years of age now. Uh, and he, he's been in the industry all his life, he, albeit being a watchmaker and became, got more heavily involved in clocks when he was 70 years of age. So, you know, he knows his, he knows his stuff and, I, and I, I listen to him, listen to him all the time. But as I say, I don't profess to know everything, but this is just my way uh, of doing it. And yeah, I'm always open to advice as well. I mean, I'm happy for someone to chime in and give me friendly advice. Um, but yeah, that's it. Anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. If you like my videos, please give me the thumbs up and, you know, like them, thumbs up and subscribe to me. Um, and if there's anything you particularly need, you know, you think I, might, I could help you with, please feel free to leave me a comment. And uh, I'll certainly try to answer them as I go along. I do I do look at all my comments. I do read through them. And if you look on my YouTube channel, I have answered all of them. I've never sort of not answered them, you know. Um, but as I say, I've been very busy lately, so I've not been able to get to YouTube. I'm still busy, but I want to make an effort because I want to promote what we're doing a little bit more. So uh, I'm going to try and make a few YouTube videos and, you know, to showcase what we're doing and, and what we can do, but also help our clock community along our, our fellow clockmakers and help the people who are coming into this fantastic industry um, you know they certainly won't regret it if they get it right let's put it that way it's a great living um, you meet some lovely people and you know stick with it stick at it anyway this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside you have a great evening thank you